Hello, my absolutely not criminal peeps. This is Ket, aka Kakibot, and today we are finally making a video about how safe is Edinburgh? Because a lot of you sent me this question in my DMs on Instagram or even here on YouTube, and I thought, let's just do a bit of a deep dive. Now, one of the first places you might go to find out whether Edinburgh is safe enough for you and your family when you're visiting or moving here is Numbio, which is the same place where you might go if you're looking into how expensive it is to live here. And Numbio has this uh, like safety index on which uh, Edinburgh scores at 30, which is relatively low. It's kind of like a higher end of lowish. And I'm gonna tell you, because I feel like without context, you can't really tell if that's low or high. You only know it because because I just told you. But let's talk about how some of the other big European cities are scoring. So the one city that's lower, like quite a lot lower than Edinburgh is Tokyo. You probably know if you've ever looked into travel to Japan, Japan is extremely safe. Tokyo is at 23. Uh, London is on 53, so that's kind of like in the middle. And New York City is on 50. So surprisingly, New York is actually better than London. Even in the context of Scotland, Edinburgh is really good. So if you're trying to decide where in Scotland you want to move and you kind of have like multiple Scottish cities on the table, Edinburgh is still probably the best choice when it comes to safety. Glasgow is at 45, Dundee is at 46. Stirling is surprisingly at 50 mostly because of drugs, we're gonna get to that later. Aberdeen, only at 34. So finally, Aberdeen has something going for it. Sorry, Aberdonians, at least you're safe. <laughs> so this index is put together with all sorts of like subcategories of crime and safety issues and TLDR, Edinburgh really is very safe, but there are basically two main problems all throughout Scotland, which is drugs and like vandalism and like property theft, uh, by which I don't mean that someone is gonna like, you know, steal your wallet. It's more likely gonna be like your bicycle or your car. So one of the first things that might come to your mind if you're coming to Edinburgh to visit or to move here is theft. Uh, the most classic of all visitor <laughs> crime issues. Um, Edinburgh is not super bad for theft, but I think that you really have to use your common sense. Like if you're coming here during either like the Christmas period or the festival period when the streets get really, really full of people, it's extremely easy for other people to steal your belongings. Like don't, just don't be stupid. Just like keep your pockets shut. So I came here from Prague, as you might know, and in Prague I got pickpocketed many times despite being careful. That has never happened to me here. So like my own impression is that Edinburgh is much safer than somewhere like Prague, even though I think that on Numbio, Prague actually has a better score than Edinburgh. My general advice would be stick to the classic wisdom of just like not inviting anyone to steal your things. You know, don't leave your camera outside in a, in a coffee shop while like, going to the loo, things like that. Um, I think that obviously if you're walking around and acting quite touristy, you might be getting some of that uh, unwanted attention from people who might want to pickpocket you. And um, I'm not trying to tell you not to act touristy. Like, I think that it's better to stick to some of those like safety tips and be touristy, you know, enjoy being tourist in Edinburgh, take all the pictures, you know, stop and enjoy all the details of our beautiful city. Enjoy your time here and just don't leave your wallet like half hanging out of your backpack or your pocket and you'll be fine. Now, if you're moving here long term, then uh, you might be worried about the same thing. Um, I think that in general, that makes you even safer because again, you're not kind of giving people that signal like I'm not from here and also if you're local and you lose something you have a good chance that someone's actually gonna return it. I think in Edinburgh we have quite a good sense of community, people usually look out for each other and that's also a good thing if um, you're worried about some of the theft of like bikes and cars. If you live in like a good community neighborhood, people usually like look out for your stuff as well. Uh, by which I mean those like older ladies who don't have anything better to do than to look into the street and like keep an eye out for uh, youths. <laughs> and anyone who might be you know, up to no good. Um, I think that personally, like living in the colonies, that gives me a lot of peace of mind. Like if I'm leaving our house for a week, I know that our neighbor is usually there and you know, he has a good relationship with us. So you know, if you move here, try to have a good relationship with your neighbors and that might make you feel safer in the long run. 
kind of connected to it is the vandalism problem. Um, again, like if you live around people you trust, then it's less likely that someone's going to destroy your belongings. And it's also more likely that if someone does destroy your belongings, someone's going to be around who will like call the police and be the witness. I think some areas of Edinburgh might have like a graffiti problem. The city center doesn't really. There's a lot of beautiful street art that sometimes frustratingly gets covered with like regular graffiti tags. You know, a lot of people will be frustrated with that. But I think that compared to, again, my home city of Prague, the graffiti problem, if you even see it as a problem, it's not really that much of a thing here. Um, usually when <laughs> there is a graffiti problem, it's uh, politically motivated. Like uh, last time when someone graffitied some uh, political opinions on the wall of the Holyrood Palace here. Now, drugs. Unfortunately, Scotland is quite rife with drugs and I'm not telling you this because I'm, I'm trying to warn you that once you move here, your kids will suddenly become drug addicts. It's, it's not something that uh, Scotland just like imposes onto you. It's just something that you kind of notice around you and uh, knowing that it's a thing will explain some of the stuff you sometimes see in the streets. So unfortunately, the number of drug-related deaths in Scotland is four times the UK's average. So yeah, you can imagine that it is quite a noticeable and dramatic difference up here in the north. The most used drugs in Scotland are cannabis and cocaine. With cannabis, as with many other European cities, it is kind of a very noticeable part of the whole like urban tapestry. You do see it being used and you definitely do smell it around you. Uh, with cocaine, that's less of a case. You usually see it after it's been used. You know, you can tell when someone uh, is uh, in that in that mood. I think Scotland's drug problem is also what explains all those kind of like random attacks that sometimes happen. Like the last one I can think of was this guy who was just walking around Kelton Hill, just like punching people, uh, which whenever something like this happens, it makes me feel quite quite uncomfortable as it would anyone and I think it is mostly because otherwise Edinburgh is so safe that like then when you see someone who just like loses it and starts attacking people out of nowhere it feels quite extreme. Scotland also has a bit of a bad reputation for knife crime and if you're not from here then I feel like the phrase knife crime, it sounds really scary. And I mean, it should be, but there's like a second side of this coin, which is it's called knife crime because there basically isn't any gun crime. In the year 1996, there was a school shooting in the town of Dunblane in Scotland. And uh, basically that led to quite huge changes in UK's legislation around guns and owning them and using them. And that meant that there haven't been any other school shootings since. So I think that on its own, own really speaks for the general sense of safety here, especially if you're coming here with kids. Um, now about knife crime, if you're visiting as a tourist and you're kind of sticking to the more touristy areas, I think that this is not something that you should be worried about at all. Like even myself, I've lived here for 11 years now and um, there are probably areas in Edinburgh where I wouldn't go after dark. There are some parts of Leith where I wouldn't want to go alone after dark. I think that some of the parks, some of the larger parks are not really um, advisable to go to, let's say, past midnight. Um, also places like Nidri or West Pilton. Uh, all of these uh, I am sourcing from Simon who <laughs> grew up here and he has a whole list of places where he's afraid to go <laughs> based on his bad experiences when he was younger. Obviously there's also other types of salt that uh, might happen might take place, uh, one of them being the good old-fashioned verbal assault. Um, obviously there's a lot of drinking going on even in the city center, so even as a tourist you might experience someone just like shouting something unsavory at you. Um, sadly, if you're a white straight man, it probably won't happen to you unless you're like speaking very loudly with an American accent or you're like loudly mispronouncing uh, the name of the city. Uh, but as a woman or as a person of color, that might be a bit more problematic. So this is something that I do have some first-hand experience with. Uh, usually it happens if I'm walking around with one of my Czech friends and we're speaking in Czech and so we're very kind of like 
foreigner presenting and um, some people see that as an invitation to insult us based on our Slavic language. Um, usually it's not people you would like look at and be like wow I'm disappointed in you that uh, you would have uh, these beliefs because most British people when they do have these beliefs they keep them to themselves and then let them run wild when they go to the elections or <laughs> <laughs> when they're picking their government, um, which is sad in its own way. Now, an extra note on youth, because when I was going through Edinburgh Reddit, I did notice an interesting trend. Uh, it might sound like a joke. I think that uh, a lot of us of like my age in like early 30s, we make that joke. Like we see a group of young people and we're like, oh, youths. But um, in Edinburgh, you should be scared of the youths. Like <laughs> genuinely, I would say that the, the scariest and the most sort of uncomfortable making you feel group of people that's a phrase that exists um, is like young people I would say you know from from teens to like early 20s they tend to kind of pick on people of like their age and slightly higher they usually will not be um, attacking or insulting people of like their parents age but if you're like in your 30s might have the misfortune of running into a group of youths that uh, will feel welcome to shout something at you or throw something at you it just happens some advice specific for you women and girls traveling especially solo to edinburgh I would say, again, Edinburgh is relatively safe. To me, it's safer than a lot of other cities. But one thing that did come up a lot last year was there was a bit of like a roofy epidemic. Like there was a part of last year when um, when the lockdown kind of eased and people started going out a lot again and uh, suddenly everyone felt invited to use roofies on each other. <sighs> I think that this year it's a lot better. I think that it kind of like normalized itself somewhat, but keep in mind that this is something that does happen. I think that the police is keeping a closer eye on it now and uh, there are some nonprofits that are trying to offer services uh, for women. I'm gonna try and find them and link them in the doobly-doo because I know that last year a lot of people were sending them to me not realizing that I don't go out so <laughs> so I still have the link somewhere uh, and they are probably still uh, functioning so uh, if you're traveling solo or in a small group of women you might find these useful something you might not have thought about is what Scotland's role is in terms of like larger sort of world politics uh, because I think that to a lot of people like they think like yeah UK is an important player and you know we have like you know, nuclear warheads and things like that. But maybe you don't realize that a lot of these nuclear warheads are actually stored in Scotland. That's the reason why some people will theorize that if there was some sort of larger war, some sort of world conflict, uh, Scotland might actually be one of the prime targets, not to give you any unnecessary anxiety, but uh, some people do have it. Some people do actively fight against uh, UK storing the Trident missiles in Scotland's west coast sort of area. Uh, another place that's there that's kind of politically quite important. It's the naval base in Faslane. Uh, so there's, it's kind of a double whammy and I think it makes some people who know it's there quite anxious. Uh, other than that, probably all good, but I think that these two things, somewhat anxiety inducing. Uh, when it comes to non-war disasters, but just natural disasters, uh, I think Scotland is doing pretty well, except for some of, the, some of the heat waves and some of the cold snaps that we have, we're doing pretty good. I think the only thing that uh, on a kind of a lower level can be kind of slightly dangerous. I think sometimes the wind genuinely gets very strong. Like if you have, I don't know, kids or even older kids that you would let out, uh, you know, cycling around town sometimes, like if they're in art school and if they cycle with a portfolio, they are basically a kite. This might or might not be based on my own personal experience. Traffic in general, I would say, is very safe for pedestrians. Cars here have to drive quite slowly and quite carefully. I think what is a lot more dangerous is being a cyclist because uh, a lot of the, the drivers here, they tend to forget that you exist and you obviously have to share the space with them, unlike when you're a pedestrian, you have your own safe space. Uh, there is, however, a special place in hell for cyclists who don't ride their bikes where they're supposed to and they just ride them on the sidewalks. I have so much anxiety when people are trying to like ride their bike around me. I'm like, you're, you're too fast. You're gonna... Ah. 
And to show you that I went really like deep in this dive about safety in Scotland, I'm also going to mention animals and <laughs> which animals are unsafe to hang around. Um, so if you're traveling obviously outside of Edinburgh, if you're traveling into Highlands, uh, I would say there's two to three dangerous animals to keep in mind. Uh, ticks, they obviously have some tick-borne illnesses in them, so careful, uh, you know, take them out as soon as you notice them. And if you notice any weird zitty formations on your body, go to the doctor as soon as possible. Also adders and coos, highland coos, they actually are potentially dangerous if you don't treat them with the respect they uh, deserve they might get grumpy at you and they might either like charge into you or impale you or uh, many other interesting scenarios that I'm currently making up <laughs> as I go. In the city specifically, there are foxes and you might find that a bit odd if you're not from a country where foxes are one of the urban animals, um, which I think is most cities and countries. But Scotland is a rabies-free country, so you don't have to worry too much about them. They're basically like, you know, little little trash dogs. Like, they, they are a lot more afraid of you than you are of them. But to end on a high note, even though maybe the foxes were the high note, but still, uh, I just want to reiterate that Edinburgh is in fact a very safe city to visit, even as a solo traveler, or to move to. Because like my own experience of, again, being here for 11 years, years now when it comes to my experience with crime or you know being attacked um, I really think that the most experience I have with just like sometimes people especially drunk people drunk men being dicks to me in the street that is something that just does happen uh, if you do go out after dark uh, I've never been assaulted or like physically attacked uh, I've never been drugged uh, Maybe no one just wants to drag me. Maybe I'm just not cute enough. <laughs> and whenever I lost something, it was always returned to me, which also makes me feel very safe. I do like the sense of community. I do like the, the feeling that people here do look out for me. Even if, you know, for many years I felt like an outsider, I felt like a foreigner. I do now feel like I'm a part of the community and I look out for people and they look out for me. So, you know, if you do move here and you stay here for a couple of years, that is, a reward that's waiting for you. Actually, one time I have left my very new, very expensive phone in a taxi and the cabbie drove all the way from outside Edinburgh on his day off to my house to return the phone to me, which uh, made me feel so like welcome. It just made me feel kind of cared for by strangers. And that is just something that happens from time to time in Edinburgh. And it, it is such a nice side of this city. Um, yeah, so if this video made you feel in any way uncomfortable or anxious, then I'm sorry. I just was trying to be very thorough. If you do, however, think that I forgot about anything, absolutely let me know in the comments below. Uh, we can all discuss. Um, let me know if you ever had any bad experiences with Prime in Edinburgh or let me know if you had any good ones like me. Good experiences with Prime. No, I mean like good experiences with you thinking that crime is waiting for you around the corner and it actually wasn't crime. It was someone looking out for you instead. Alrighty, so that is it from me. Uh, I'm gonna drink this rest of my half pint of a 2% shandy because that is the level of drinking I am willing to do during the festival season. I'm a party girl. And if you want to follow my life and all the happenings in it, uh, don't forget to visit me on Instagram on Kaki Bot and Kaki Blog. And also I am sometimes on TikTok here and if you want to support this channel for now the best way of doing that is to buy something from my Etsy store link is in the doobly-doo I sell cute little Edinburgh and uh, Scotland themed goods like this one for this one there and I can guarantee you're gonna love them alrighty so uh, cheers to safety in Edinburgh and you know don't uh, leave your wallets hanging out of your pockets and you'll be all good clink bye bye